Our home and our ranch are located in southwest Missouri in the big city of Dadeville. Buck 40 Bison currently is a, about an 80 animal breeding stock operation, cow-calf operation. Came up with a business plan that by its very nature has turned into breeding stock but also with a wholesale meat operation. So working bison was probably the thing that scared us the most as we were getting into the business as far as the unknown. But once a year we knew in the region that we live in because of the close proximity to other species, uh, cattle, and other things, that we absolutely needed to get our animals in a pen and get them vaccinated against those types of diseases that they may catch across the fence. There are, there are a lot of people who raise bison in more of a natural environment and they may never work them and that's a way of doing it. For us it's important for us to to check on the animal on a regular basis and make sure that they have what they need. And so for our philosophy, we're gonna work them. We work the bison only one time a year. And whenever we say work the bison, that is bringing them to the corrals, running to them through the head chute, and giving their vaccinations, getting weights, and getting them out. That's by far the most stressful day of their life. We use the same time of year to work them as we do to wean the calves that are going off to the starter herds or going into meat production. When we need to work them, uh, we want it to be as normal a day as possible right up until the time it's not. We prefer an open system. We specifically chose a brand called Mirand, and our whole reasoning behind choosing that brand was they offered a portable unit uh, that was also heavy duty for bison. The advantage for us, quite frankly, is cost and portability. Uh, we've got four production herds scattered uh, in different acreages to buy a, a working system to have in each of those four places would have been cost prohibitive. The system design that we have is not just the working chute, the alley and the tub, but is also all of those things leading up to that. We initially tried to use uh, tarps and other things to create a, a more closed system, particularly in the higher stress areas, and we had, personally, we had a much easier and less stressful time using the, using the open panels. Stress is a huge killer for the bison. And at the time of year when we're working the bison, that, that mama doesn't just have her baby with her, which she's stressed out, but she's, she's also hopefully carrying a baby. Um, so whenever uh, you keep that stress level down, that's keeping the health of mama, uh, the fetus in the mama, and in the calf itself. As long as that calf or as long as that mama can see their calf, uh, then it's, they're much lower stressed. And so whether they're looking in the corral and can see them from there, or they're looking at the holding pen in front of it and can see them there, the fact that they're close to the herd keeps their stress levels lower. So that's one of the advantages we think of having an open system. And then obviously we can always see what's going on with every animal and it's important to us to see that. So the major parts, uh, the fixed part, the part that never really goes away is the corral. Our corrals work as our center hubs in our fields. So in order to rotate to the next paddock, um, they are coming through the corral. But the day of the working is whenever we run them into the corral and I simply shut the gates behind them. And that is our roundup. We always try to make sure that corral is large enough that when we get all the animals in the, in the corral, they're still comfortable and there's plenty of room for them to move around and not feel threatened by a, any of the dominant animals or the bull that's with the herd. Everything's designed with the safety in mind of the worker and the bison. The corral system, uh, we've strategically placed uh, gates not only for the purpose of moving them from pasture to pasture, uh, but more importantly, we would put them in a place where we can connect the rest of the system easily. As we begin to start to work the animals, uh, we will have one or two people in the corral itself. They will separate a group, typically anywhere from four to eight, and they will encourage that group uh, to look for the gate that goes to the holding pen. The system is set up to where they are looking for that next exit, and that next exit is where we want them to go. From the holding pen, we offer two lead-up pins, and the lead-up pins each have a slide gate going in and out of them. The lead-up pin is used to separate one animal from those that are in the holding pin. All of those, the holding pin and the lead-up pin, have the seven-foot tall panels on each side of them. Uh, they're very heavy-duty. From the lead-up pins, uh, 
The very next step, uh, we're headed into the tub. The tub is part of a self-contained working system. A bison's natural instinct is to, once it reaches an area where it feels like it can't go any further, it'll turn around. And so our objective is, once it enters into that tub, to slide the gate shut that leads into that tub, and they'll immediately turn around and the only open space they see then is to head on up through the alley, uh, all the way through the squeeze chute uh, to the end of, this, of that system. To stop them, uh, bison working systems almost always include what they call a crash gate. When they run into that and can't go any further, it doesn't hurt them, uh, but it makes a big bang. Uh, and that's when uh, we make sure that we get their neck caught and then we'll squeeze them in so the vet can begin the work that they need to do once they're in there. My role in many ways is to support the vet. You know, I'm going to get the tags ready, I'm going to have the spreadsheet printed out that has the numbers of the animals, what their last weight was, um, the list of things that need to happen. And uh, so they get the shots. If they need tag work or anything like that, uh, that's done as quickly as possible so we can kick them right back out in the field and, and have that most stressful time of their year really be as short-lived as possible and uh, so they know life is going to be good as soon as that's over. I don't care how many times we work the animals, I always have a, I would say, a healthy amount of anxiety before we do it. For us as a team, I think one of the most important times is after the working because we will always find every single time that we work these animals there is something that needs to change or something that could improve either the process or the equipment. And so that deconstructing what happened and then talking about it and putting a plan together for the next working is, is one of the most critical things that we do. I would say the most challenging aspect of working bison is really patience. Um, it's, it's something that you can, you can only make a bison go where he wants to go. And whenever you start getting frustrated, the, the animals feed off that negative energy. Uh, you can't get worked up whenever they're not doing exactly what you want to do. Uh, we always say we're working on the bison schedule. If, you know, if, if they want to take longer that day to work them, so be it. It's, it's how you adapt to those challenges and how you overcome those challenges. Um, and do not let your emotions get the best of you. Don't try to push the bison into doing something they don't want to do. Um, you have to think on the fly and think, how's the bison going to see this, this next turn? How's the bison going to see this gate? And instead of thinking like a human, you need to think like a bison.